Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. And you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Photoshop Cafe. Today I have a treat for you. We are taking the $6,400 iMac Pro and we're going to do a speed test and compare it to two other Macs and a PC. And to compare the speed, we're not going to run benchmarks and theoretical tests. What we're going to do is real world stuff. We're going to use Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Photoshop, and we're going to do real world tasks. So let's find out if this really is a good choice or not. All right, guys, we're ready to run some tests now. Now we're going to run it on the iMac Pro, which is running at 3.2 gigahertz, and it's running eight core Xeon W processors. We've got 64 gigs of RAM. We've got a 16 gig video card. And the price, $6,400. We've got a trash can Mac Pro. It's actually circa December 2014. We're running at 3.7 gigahertz, four core processor. This also has 64 gigs of RAM and it's running dual two gig video cards, AMDs. And this at the time was $3,250. We have the latest MacBook Pro 2017, which is a four core i7 at 3.1 gigahertz. And then we've got 16 gigs of RAM and then we're running a four gig video card. And all of this weighs in at $3,399. And now we have the dark horse of our contest. We're running a Windows machine. We've got an Alienware Aurora R6. And this is running quad core or four core at 4.2 gigahertz. It's a little weaker on the RAM. We've got 16 gigs of RAM, but it's a 2666 RAM, which is the same as the iMac Pro, which is also a DDR4. And then for video card, we've got an 8 gig DDR5 uh, video card on there from NVIDIA. And this comes in much less than all the other ones at $1,600. Okay, so the Apple apps such as Final Cut Pro are not available on Windows. So I'm going to do this comparison using Adobe Creative Cloud and we're going to use three apps. We're going to use Premiere Pro, After Effects, and then Photoshop. And we're going to do some things that are going to test reading and writing speeds, resizing files, some heavy filters like warp stabilize, and different things like that. All right, guys, so now we're going to jump into Premiere Pro and let's have a look at some of the video performance on here. This test is looking at opening a Premiere Pro project, which has uh, video and images and multiple clips on here from different formats. So when we look at the results of opening the Premiere Pro project, the surprising winner here was the MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro did this in 14 seconds. The slowest was the Mac Pro at 38, and then it came in at 24 seconds for iMac Pro, which is exactly the same as the Alienware. We're going to see how long it takes to encode a video. So I'm just going to use a 1080 video for now. So now we're going to have a look at the bread and butter of video and that's how long does it take to encode. So we're going to be looking at this finished Premiere Pro project, which is actually my vlog from Nashville. Check it out. And we're going to encode this entire clip right now. So I'm encoding the project. This is where the iMac Pro really came into its own. It took seven minutes and 38 seconds for it to encode this video versus the slowest computer, which was 19 minutes and 56, which was the Mac Pro. The MacBook Pro did it in 16.48, and the Windows machine actually came in second at 15.29. We're gonna test some 4K, we're gonna see how long it takes to render some footage from the DJI Phantom 4 Pro. The DJI stuff is a little bit more heavy lifting than something like a C200 because of the compression. And then we're gonna slow down the speed to 50%, and we're also going to be using the optical flow algorithm, which is really processor intensive. So this will give us a good test. Once again, a big video task is rendering. And this is where the iMac Pro really came into its own. 14.26 seconds to render that clip. The slowest of the bunch was the MacBook Pro at 1 minute and 53.49 seconds. The Alienware was almost a minute too at 54.2 seconds. And the second fastest was the Mac Pro trash can at 29.72.
clear winner here for the iMac Pro. Then one of the other ones that's really useful inside of Premiere Pro, and man, does this take a long time, Warp Stabilize. We're gonna do a comparison there. In this test, we're taking some footage and then we're gonna apply Warp Stabilize on there. And this is one of the most time intensive things you can do in Premiere Pro. And we're gonna see how long it takes to run that filter on all the different machines. Once again, the iMac Pro is doing a great job here with video where it is the leader of the pack with Warp Stabilize at 19.39 seconds. The slowest was the Mac Pro, 26.98. Then the second fastest was the MacBook Pro, 22.93. And the second slowest was the Alienware PC at 24.62 seconds. We're gonna jump into After Effects, and what I'm gonna do is just test how long it takes to create a RAM preview on 4K footage. Testing how long it takes an eight second 4K clip to uh, get into RAM preview so it can play back in real time. So looking at this RAM preview here, the results are kind of surprising here. The Alienware PC with only 16 gigs of RAM came in at seven seconds. The MacBook Pro was the slowest with 16 as well, 16.62. The Mac Pro, the trash can at 9.48 and the iMac Pro was kind of somewhere in the slower end at 13.07 seconds. All right guys, now it's time to test the performance working with photographs inside of Photoshop. So we're gonna take this JPEG image and we're gonna resize it to 50,000 pixels. And we're gonna be using the same settings on all of them, just using the automatic interpolation. Upraising this file to 50K, believe it or not, the iMac Pro was the slowest at 8.65 seconds. The fastest was the PC at 5.58. And then the Mac Pro and the MacBook Pro were kind of exactly the same at 6.81 seconds. So now we're gonna take an 815 meg file and we're gonna see how long it takes to save it to the internal drive on each of these machines. So we're saving this file now. The fastest was the Alienware PC at 9.63, closely followed by the iMac Pro at 10.8 seconds. And taking up the tail there was the MacBook Pro at 12.27 seconds and the Mac Pro wasn't that much better at 11.32. How long does it take to open a large file like that? Now opening a PSB can take a little time and be intensive as well. So we're gonna take this 815 megabyte file and we're gonna see how long it takes to open. All right, so here's a surprising one. The dark horse of this one was the Alienware PC, which actually won. It only took 5.62 seconds to open this file. The iMac Pro and the Mac Pro were pretty close, you know, 6.67, 6.79, and the slowest was the MacBook Pro at 7.57. So, so much for that fast internal SSD. And then finally, the last thing we're gonna test is running the radial blur filter at highest quality, 100%. Now, this is something, is a good way to test the performance of your machine because this is really taxing. So now we're gonna test how long it takes to do the radial blur at best quality. This is a super process intensive task. And in order to do this, we actually had to down res the file down to 20,000 pixels because the 50,000 was too big for the filter. So we see the iMac Pro just absolutely creamed the competition here. Obviously the processor is crushing the competition. 1.4 seconds. The slowest was the Mac Pro, 6.33 seconds. And the next fastest, of course, was the Alienware PC at 3.52 and the MacBook Pro at 4.22. There we have it. There's the new iMac Pro compared with some of the other machines. So what do you think? Drop a comment. Do you find these results surprising? Or is this what you expected? And as you can see, the iMac Pro does hold its own when it comes to video, especially with real-time intensive tasks like rendering and encoding. You can see it really did crush the competition. Now, what really did surprise me though is when we were working in Photoshop. That little Alienware PC with only 16 gigs of RAM really held its own for a lot of the Photoshop tasks. You know, the iMac Pro did crush it when it came to heavy filtering, 
But it really makes me start to ask a question, you know, for $1,600, that's a quarter of the price. If you're working in Photoshop, is that really worth it? I'd love to know what you guys think. So unless you're doing heavy filtering, it looks like we're getting just as good or better performance on that PC, that Alienware PC that only costs a quarter of the money. So that begs a question, you know, well, you know, is Apple kind of gouging us when it comes to the prices? And what, what do you guys think about that? I'm really curious uh, your thoughts, you know, because you know I'm an Apple fan, but I also use Windows. I'm not just Apple. But, um, you know, I do own every product that Apple makes, and, and I love Apple. But they seem to be kind of creeping a little bit up in price, and they seem to be creeping down a little bit in performance. So Apple has promised this year they're going to be announcing or introducing an upgradable, really powerful Mac Pro workstation. So this is going to be really interesting. I mean, this thing had better deliver because um, if it doesn't deliver, I feel like there's a lot of Apple people are going to start jumping ship to Windows. Um, now, one of the things you have to bear in mind, too, is when we're talking about prices, do remember that the MacBook Pro and also the iMac Pro do come with screens, whereas the PC for $1,600, you still have to add a screen, just like you would with the trash can Mac Pro. So, you know, kind of bear that in mind, but still, you know, the pricing, the value, um, yeah, I, I kind of a little worried sometimes, you know, that Apple seems to really get you when it comes to RAM and SSDs. They seem to be very, very overpriced when it comes to that stuff. So anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, smash that like button into dust. If you're not part of the cafe crew, hit that subscribe button right now because every single week I'm coming out with new tutorials on Photoshop and Lightroom, also tech gear and reviews, as well as the occasional vlog. So anyway, guys, until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.